Now, the rest of the story. From the beginning, it was clear to all involved that this was to be no ordinary archaeological excavation, so the team of specialists proceeded with unusual care. So dense with artifacts was likely to be this site that core samples were taken first to determine which specific areas had been more recently disturbed and which had remained untouched by intervening time. The American University archaeologists, under the direction of Dr. Neil Lopinot, thus examined the entire area, were elated by the degree to which the site had been unspoiled. In the northwest extreme of the dig, a limestone wall almost perfectly intact. Carefully, the team dug deeper, wider, discovering that the stone construction had been circular, measuring about one and a half meters across. The initial conjecture, an artesian well. And the deeper they dug, the deeper the structure reached into the earth. To date, a bottom has not been found. Next, numerous areas of hand-laid brick. Some appear to have been pathways, one area in particular, the floor of what must at one time have been a room, maybe a small building. And then the scientists unearthed the mother load. Garbage. The archaeologists had struck trash. For a society is often best studied from the perspective of what it throws away. And here at this most promising dig, what had once been a refuse location was brought forth from the blackness. First discarded bones, the bones of animals that had been eaten. And from the type of butchering marks on them, it quickly became evident that the humans who had once frequented this site had been one family, had raised and butchered their own meat. Next, ceramics of unquestionable date, dates coinciding precisely with the target dates of the dig. At the top of this archaeological feature, three heat-damaged shards, the fragment of a kaolin pipe stem, the handle of a stoneware pitcher, beneath that a flow blue shard, some yellow ware, some blue and green shell-aged ceramics, some annular white paste earthware, and the puzzle pieces of what subsequently reconstructed to form a large, essentially complete bowl, the essence of the presence of charcoal and ash, the heat spalling of the ceramics left no doubt in the minds of the investigators. This had once been the site of accumulating debris, had been burned at least once, probably innumerable times. I have before me an impressive series of photographs of pictorial documentation of more than 2,000 intriguing artifacts just recently discovered. Two thousand of them included among the historical treasures are square nails, bottles of various shapes and sizes, and all from an excavation site which is surely no bigger than your own backyard. For you see, once upon a time, this archaeological dig was somebody's backyard. And that somebody was somebody known to you for the period targeted by this team of experts from the University of Missouri-St. Louis was 1835 to 1855, a time during which a certain child was growing up, a child who was to make an extraordinary impression on all of us. For now, not only do we know more about his times, but we know so much more about his life. From the painstaking archaeological investigation of his family's trash, at the Hannibal, Missouri backyard of the boyhood home of Mark Twain. Now you know the rest of the story.